Hello everyone and welcome to our today's webinar on Great Plains College MSM Agent E Summit 2020 live. Our attendees are in process of joining the webinar. In the meanwhile, on the behalf of uh, all of us at MSM at Great Plains College, I hope your family and your colleagues are all safe. Good evening ladies and gentlemen from all part of the world. I would I would like to thank you all for taking time uh, and be here with us. My name is Shivani Sachdeva, Manager Canada, overseeing Canadian Institutes at MSM. I am delighted and pleased to introduce our today's presenter, uh, Christy, Manager Admission and International. Before I hand over the mic to her, I will quickly run through the housekeeping requirements that are needed today. As a reminder, you all are on the mute and you are all encouraged to put your questions and comments through the presentation in the Q&A section which is uh, present in the control panel. Your, answer, your questions will be answered uh, on the later on stage of the presentation. And in case you face, face any technical difficulties, you can drop in your message in the chat box. Uh, this webinar is recorded. And in case you want to see it uh, on the later on stage, you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can have the copy of the same. So without further ado, let's kick start the things by welcoming our presenter, Christy. Over to you, Christy. Thank you. Thanks, Shivani. Uh, thanks for joining me this evening, everyone. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to come and learn a little bit more about Great Plains College. Uh, Great Plains College is located in Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, Saskatchewan is a uh, province that's in the center of the country and uh, it is a um, agricultural and oil hub of, uh, of Canada. So let's just take a look here. Uh, so there is the location of Saskatchewan within the country. It is uh, a little known destination in Canada, but has many amazing opportunities for international students at this point in time. Uh, it has uh, uh, a thriving economy. It has uh, many job opportunities. It uh, certainly offers a high quality of life and, uh, and is really one of the uh, exceptional spots in, in Canada. So some of the benefits of uh, studying in Canada or in Saskatchewan, I guess, are uh, the fact that we have a low cost of living in relation to some of the other parts of Canada. So in certain um, parts of Canada, then the cost of living is about 30 or 40 percent more than it is in Saskatchewan. So uh, we have a, that to offer students. The province has used immigration uh, heavily to uh, help to fill job opportunities and to attract population to the area. So we're a very culturally diverse province, uh, very welcoming. Uh, I think that uh, it's one of the things that the immigrant population finds the most amazing about Saskatchewan is how welcoming it is for the, uh, the immigrant population. The weather in Saskatchewan is um, variable. So we have four seasons in Saskatchewan. We have uh, currently it's summer. So we have weather that is very similar to um, uh, India, uh, maybe not quite so hot, but uh, we are forecast to have a couple of days of uh, plus 30 temperatures here. Um, over the next few days and those types of temperatures would be standard for our summer season. Um, we also have uh, the autumn or fall season which will follow summer and the temperatures start to cool a little bit but uh, still maintain kind of that 20 degree temperature range. Uh, following that is our best known season, which is winter, and you can see a picture of that in the top corner of the screen. Of course, the temperatures drop below zero and we get snow. Now, many people think that that is uh, uh, quite a scary thing to experience minus temperatures. But uh, the opportunities that come for activities during the winter are, are really quite exciting for students, particularly if they haven't um, experienced snow or winter before. And one of the great things about, um, you know, the way that 
education works in Canada is that students normally arrive in September when the weather is still very warm and uh, then it slowly gets cold so they're kind of acclimatized by the time the cold weather hits uh, then they are are used to those temperatures and, and in fact many of our students end up quite enjoying the the winter season. Um, then our spring season has temperatures that are kind of anywhere between that 15 to uh, 25 degree range and sometimes even warmer than that. And uh, one, of the, one of the great things is that there's, there's always a lot of um, unique things in each season, uh, both for activities and for uh, the landscape. So it's really quite beautiful. So we've got two major cities in Saskatchewan. The province of Saskatchewan has quite a large land area uh, and a relatively small population. So we have two main cities in the, the province, Saskatoon and Regina. Uh, both of those have a combined population of about a half a million people. The entire province of Saskatchewan has just over a million people, 1.2 million, something like that. And um, it's one of the reasons why um, studying in Saskatchewan and attracting the immigrant population has been so important to our government uh, because it is a way that uh, people can, um, you know, fill job opportunities and uh, institutions like Great Plains College can maintain, um, you know, high levels of programming. So definitely um, a very welcoming attitude towards uh, international students and the immigrant population. So Great Plains College is part of the regional college system and the regional college system was put in place to ensure that uh, education was accessible in as many different locations as possible across the province. So our uh, campus locations are in six cities across uh, really the southern part of the province. The main campuses that uh, accept international students are, are our Kindersley campus, the Warman campus, and the Swift Current campus locations. So on the pictures that you see below, um, the Kindersley campus is in the middle, and, uh, and then the other campus is our Swift Current campus, which is our main and largest campus in the organization. Uh, there isn't a picture of the Warman campus, but it's quite similar to the Kindersley campus. So Swift Current is a um, population of about 20,000 people. Now in uh, global standards, that's a, a pretty small population and considered quite a small city. Uh, however, by Saskatchewan standards, it's one of our, our uh, larger cities, so sixth largest in Saskatchewan. It is the major center in the entire southwestern corner of the province and um, it uh, certainly is, is a hub of activity for, for that uh, part of the province. So um, the southern corner of the province, I guess, or the southern half of the province really, uh, certainly um, they, it allows for, uh, you know, the opportunity for people to experience warmer temperatures on average than uh, what people would think of as Canadian temperatures. So uh, we really do enjoy kind of a, a more mild climate. And uh, so that's one of the, the upsides, I guess, of Southern Saskatchewan. Warman is one of the other cities that um, is accepting international students at this point. Uh, so Warman is a smaller city, uh, but it is just on the outskirts of Saskatoon, so only about 10 minutes away. Um, 15 minutes, I guess it says on the slide. Uh, so the um, proximity to the city might be something that is uh, of interest to people who might be a little bit nervous about uh, living in a smaller city. 
the city of Warman is uh, very forward thinking. Um, it's, it's grown immensely in the last several years. And so lots of opportunities for uh, young people, young families. And uh, yeah, it offers a really lovely quality of life. And the city of Kindersley would be uh, one of the smallest cities that we have uh, accepting international students or is the smallest city that's accepting international students uh, in the Great Plains College organization. So it uh, has a population of about 5,000, but in Saskatchewan, uh, because our economy is driven by agriculture, then many of our um, residents, I guess, live in areas that are outside of main cities. So basically, the population of the actual town site of Kindersley would be 5,000. But in the surrounding area, if you take into account other small communities that feed into Kindersley or um, the agricultural population, you're looking at a population of around 20,000 people. So um, if students are, are somewhat uncertain about what life in a city of this size would be like, uh, please let them know that um, all of the, you know, the same services exist in each of these cities as would exist in, in any of, um, you know, the, their experience of larger cities. Um, there are doctors, there are uh, shopping, there's activities, there's recreation, uh, all of those things still exist in each of these types of cities because cities of this size are actually more common in Saskatchewan than large cities. So uh, our population, like I said, is, is small and in a large land area, it is spread out more. So as I said, this type of um, city is quite common. So Great Plains College is a um, designated learning institution, which means that we are uh, supported by uh, the government. We are a public institution, um, but also the designated learning institution process ensures that institutions are meeting certain guidelines in order to be able to operate uh, programs for international students. One of the things that um, I believe is the, the greatest sales point about Great Plains College is the fact that it is a small college setting. Uh, when you are an international student, you arrive with certain needs, I guess, in terms of your um, academic supports. Uh, and sm the small college system really tailors to the needs of the international student. Uh, we have small class sizes. The staff is very excited to have the international student population as part of their classrooms. They offer a, a great deal of support to the students, either in a one-on-one -on -one setting or in small group settings. Uh, so that really helps to support the students and increase their opportunities to succeed in, um, in an academic situation. So basically, uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why uh, I, I wholeheartedly support the, the small college um, system for international students, as I believe that um, their opportunities to, to succeed and get the most out of their education really exist the best in a small college setting. So at the Swift Current campus, the um, uh, Great Plains College has created a varsity athletics program. Uh, so we have our Sundogs athletics team and uh, if students are so inclined, then they can try out to have that um, additional experience as part of their uh, studies. And uh, yeah, so that exists at the Swift Current campus. So on the whole, uh, Great Plains College hosts 4,500 full-time, part-time, and casual students across uh, any given academic year. Uh, we pride ourselves on being very student-centered. So um, really, you know, with the, a smaller uh, group of students, you're able to focus in on what each student needs and the individual needs of um, of those students, and then you know, focus on uh, providing those needs for every student. So in terms of student supports, we offer um, 
multiple opportunities for tutoring in many different um, areas, uh, language support if that's necessary for students, uh, essay writing support, um, mental health supports if students are, are struggling with being away from home or being away from their families, those types of supports are also in place. So um, yeah, I think what students most notice about our uh, programs is that, you know, the students are very supported in, in all aspects of their, of their life. Um, at each campus, there is a student association and it's, um, I guess, kind of like a student government. So uh, not necessarily elected, more volunteer, but they do operate as a, a board and that uh, organization does help to advocate for student, um, I guess, needs and wants uh, throughout the year. Uh, they uh, offer opportunities for students to have activities uh, on campus and off campus. Uh, they will uh, help students if they need advocacy in any given area. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just an opportunity for them to become involved in a volunteer position outside of their academics. Uh, the Swift Current Campus has been uh, recently renovated and uh, is a beautiful um, you know, space for learning. Uh, it offers the opportunity for students to have access to a student lounge that has many different activities in it, a cafe. Uh, so yeah, really a beautiful, a beautiful space to study. So one of the um, government initiatives that has occurred because of the desire to welcome international people to the province is newcomer welcome centers. So newcomer welcome centers are in most of Saskatchewan's main cities and basically their mandate is to provide support services for newcomers to the country. Now, uh, the Newcomer Welcome Center in Swift Current is exceptionally active and, uh, and because that's where the majority of our students have been till now, they have been an amazing support for our students. They will support students in many, many aspects of their life from finding an apartment to um, applying for their permanent residence and everything in between. So uh, they, they um, are a, a very, very strong partner of the college in terms of um, ensuring that students feel supported as they settle into Canadian culture. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we do is we involve the Newcomer Welcome Center in our student orientations. We have them um, kind of talk about their services. The students register with the Welcome Center so that the Welcome Center keeps them in touch with any of the activities or services that they're providing at any given time of the year. And um, uh, that's been a, a really fantastic support system for the students. So they also become involved in some of the uh, social aspects of the Newcomer Welcome Center. So they offer numerous opportunities throughout the year to have the newcomer population come together and um, you know they have different events so that there's a, a, a community that's built um, and students feel the, the support that they need when they're settling into a city and in some cases they may be all by themselves uh, so that support network becomes very important to them. So currently, uh, Great Plains College is offering three programs. Uh, this is our third year of active recruitment of international students. And it was very important to Great Plains College that we could do this well. Uh, therefore, we offer um, just, just three programs and uh, the idea was to offer these programs for a certain number of years and become really good at providing quality programming, but also, um, you know, the atmosphere for, for international students that would be most beneficial to them. So as of 2021, we will be opening more programs. And, um, you know, now that we've learned uh, a great deal about how to provide uh, quality programming for students, uh, we feel more comfortable opening up more programs for 2021. However, 
Uh, for 2020, uh, we have three programs that are on offer. The Administrative Assistant Program, the Business Diploma Program, which has two different, um, I guess, specializations, uh, Human Resources and Management, uh, as well as the Continuing Care Assistant Program, which is our health-related program. So the administrative assistant program is an entry level position and uh, it is a position that's available uh, across many different sectors. So we felt it was a good opportunity to um, provide international students with training that would give them the best opportunity to find work uh, for their postgraduate work permit or potential permanent resident application. So an administrative assistant uh, basically s provides support services for uh, executive positions in any type of organization. Uh, the program itself is uh, really quite valuable across the board because students end up learning skills that are uh, applicable in many different areas. So things like uh, word processing and counting practices and use of, of spreadsheets and that sort of thing. So basically uh, skills that are valuable across any um, field. So the salary range for administrative assistance starting is 46.4 to 68.9. So, um, you know, a, uh, a quality uh, oh, uh, salary, I guess, for students starting out. The cost of the program uh, for 2020 has been um, decreased as of late uh, and so all tuition costs have been reverted to 2019-2020 levels so the administrative assistant course is now being offered at 12,800 for the 2020-2021 uh, school year. Uh, one thing to note is that all of the uh, tuition costs that uh, we quote include all of the costs for the student's academic program. So all of their student fees um, that would be charged to them, all of their health insurance, their tuition, as well as all of their books are included in the, the cost that we quote. So once the student pays uh, that fee, then all of their academic costs are taken care of. So in order to gain admission to the Administrative Assistant Program, um, applicants must have a, a successfully completed grade 12 diploma. Uh, they, it, it serves them very well to have uh, a grade 12 um, math or an equivalent to a grade 11 or 12 um, math course. The um, one thing that's quite notable about this program is that it's very important for students to have a solid foundation in computer skills. This program is operated um, it, kind of like an online program. It's not online, but, uh, but students do all of their work on the computer. All of their assignments are there. All of their tests are done on computer. Uh, there is an instructor right in the room with them, and they do work with that instructor in a face-to-face -face manner, but all of the coursework itself is done online. So if students have um, minimal computer training or background, then that just becomes kind of a barrier to their success in this program. Um, we do offer the, um, the IELTS as the language assessment that we accept. Uh, so we accept expect a uh, 6.5 overall uh, score in the IELTS with a minimum of six in all bands for this program. Uh, we also uh, accept the Duolingo online language assessment uh, with a score of 115. And I believe that um, many of our uh, national organizations are currently working very hard to get IRCC to um, to accept Duolingo as uh, a language assessment uh, within the study permit application process. And I think they're they're close, but uh, but so far that's not the case. Uh, what we do offer though is if students have had past education in English, 
Uh, so for example, let's say they took a post-secondary degree in English, then we would entertain uh, an application to waive the language assessment, um, I guess their uh, submission, uh, but we would still ask them to do the Duolingo test. The Duolingo test is uh, very reasonably priced and it's very easy to do uh, and it does just still provide us with an opportunity to have a, an idea of what the, um, the student's language level is. So the next course that we offer is the Business Diploma course, and that is a two-year program, and it is the, the first kind of foundational um, business type program um, for, for students. So basically, um, the first two years of a uh, business degree program, and this program does transfer directly to the University of Saskatchewan or the University of Regina if students wish to continue their education after the two years. So uh, there are those opportunities available for them. Uh, however, we do encourage students to, of course, come and study their first two years with Great Plains College. Uh, the, average tuition on um, in comparison is quite a bit lower than it is to the universities and of course we then continue to talk about the uh, the other benefits to students in the small class sizes and the level of support they get in their first two years in Canada. So the business diploma program um, provides students with that kind of foundational uh, business knowledge and um, Great Plains College does an amazing job of, of trying to um, make a student's education very applicable to what they'll have to do once they're done. So uh, at this point, um, there are several opportunities for students within their program, um, opportunities for them to connect with business people in the Southwest, opportunities for for them to uh, present business plans to successful entrepreneurs and get feedback on what that would, uh, how those could be improved. So many different um, opportunities for them to improve their practical skills in the area of business. Uh, the salary range, so average salary in Saskatchewan would be a starting wage of about 76,000. And um, again, this course was chosen as one of our introductory courses because of the fact that there are many different fields that students could use this uh, education to, to find work. So um, lots of different opportunities for students, um, even right down to starting their own business if that's something that, um, that they would be uh, interested to do as they graduate. So the cost of this program, again, has uh, recently uh, been decreased to the 2019-2020 levels. And uh, so basically, the, uh, the cost of year one of this program is 17,000, and the cost of year two is 13,500. Uh, students are um, afforded the opportunity to access uh, amazing scholarships in this program. Uh, so the way that uh, Great Plains College scholarship program in, in the business diploma works is that uh, based on their marks from their first year, they can apply for scholarships in their second year. And those scholarships range anywhere from 500 to $5,000 um, for their second year. So it could potentially make a, a really nice difference in their second year tuition. So to uh, get into the business diploma course, you need a successfully completed grade 12 diploma. Um, a math equivalent is uh, nice, but commerce stream students are eligible as well. Uh, our IELTS requirement is 6.5 overall with no bands less than five and a Duolingo score of 110.
So our continuing care assistant program is, uh, as I said, our health related program. Um, many people who have already been working in health or trained in health in their home countries will use this course as their opportunity to gain employment within the health uh, system in Saskatchewan. Um, the amazing thing about this course is that there is an exceptionally high demand for people with this training currently. So um, at this point, um, most people who take this course, as long as they're proven to be efficient, uh, will um, secure employment likely before they're even done their studies. So um, within this course, there are three opportunities for students to do practicum placements. And within those practicum placements, um, of course, they uh, will work in a, um, a care facility or uh, some type of, of um, home care setting or acute care um, facility. And uh, like I said, as long as they, they prove themselves to be efficient, uh, more often than not, one of those opportunities will result in a job offer if the student so chooses. So it is uh, an excellent opportunity for students, particularly those who are seeking permanent residence as um, you know, they, they will need that job offer in their field in order to be able to apply. So the average salary in Saskatchewan starting wage is about 42,000. Uh, the cost of this program is uh, currently uh, $18,000 for one year. So to have uh, to gain admission to the program, students need a successfully completed grade 12, a minimum average of 60% and uh, no courses less than 50%. The IELTS score is 6.5 overall and no bands less than 5 uh, or a Duolingo score of 110. So, uh, as we all know, 2020 has uh, imploded uh, somewhat and so basically our application deadline was May 29th, 2020. Uh, however, we are continuing to accept applications uh, for programs um, potentially starting in September, if, um, if students applied early, uh, then they could potentially arrive for September. At this point, for uh, the 2020 year, it appears as if, and there has been no formal announcements yet, um, but it appears as if uh, programs will be deferred, uh, so students will have the opportunity to um, apply for study permits in a timely manner. I know most of the IRCC or um, visa processing centers around the world have been closed and students have been unable to, um, you know, gain access to application procedures, um, including biometrics and medicals. And uh, in some cases, students have had trouble accessing documents. So, um, Great Plains College at this point feels that deferring all applications will be of assistance to students who are still working to get their um, study permits in place. Uh, we did, of course, discuss the option as many other institutions have moved to online, uh, but Great Plains College, with its small class sizes, um, maintains that face-to-face -face instruction is still the best possible option for international students uh, and domestic students in many cases. Um, international students are, when they travel for education, are, are not only seeking the education, they're seeking the cultural experience, the, the global work experience, all of those things are part and parcel of why international students want to travel. And so uh, Great Plains College felt that um, moving to online didn't provide that opportunity for students. It only really provided one aspect of that. So um, knowing that uh, it would take a lot of work to provide quality online programming, Great Plains College opted not to offer online programming. 
and instead plan for uh, the soonest possible date for students to arrive for face-to-face -face instruction. So at this point, um, most courses will be deferred likely to January, a January start date. Uh, the continuing care assistant program, uh, just based on the nature of the practicum pieces within that course, will likely be deferred to September 2021. Uh, again, uh, those are, are um, not things that are, are in place firmly just yet, but those are, are likely the direction that Great Plains College will go. Uh, the in advice that I've been giving to students is, is very much continue down the application pathway. Uh, we certainly need to go through the application process uh, and get students into a position where they can apply for their study permit as early as possible. Uh, at this point, it is still somewhat up in the air as to how long it's going to take for that study permit application process to happen. There is a backlog of applications from the time period in which applications weren't being processed, uh, coupled with the influx of applications that will happen when borders do open up. Um, I feel as if uh, the best advice we can give students is apply early. Uh, that's that's the most important piece. How do they apply? Well, I guess uh, for Great Plains College, anyway, the uh, opportunity to apply is entirely online. Uh, they can fill out the application form, which takes very little time, and uh, upload their uh, transcript, passport, language requirement um, documents, and uh, any any past transcripts they would have from post-secondary, if that's um, uh, part of the person's um, profile. Um, they can pay the application fee via Flywire, which the link would be at the end of the application process, and, um, and then submit. The applications will come directly to me and we will vet them. Um, we, normally what, what we do is for the uh, administrative assistant and business uh, programs, we have a three-day turnaround time. So students will find out if they're accepted within three days, three business days, I guess I should say. Uh, the continuing care assistant program, given that it is a health related program, we defer to our partner institution to do the assessment of those applications. So that process takes more like three weeks. Uh, so students will hear in about three weeks whether or not they've been accepted to that program. <clears throat> So once we receive all of the students' um, documentations, then again, we'll assess them for, for eligibility and we will send, uh, if they're eligible, we will send them an offer letter. The offer letter um, asks for the tuition deposit as well. There may be outstanding documents at this point. Um, IELTS test centers are um, possibly opened, possibly not opened in some areas. Uh, so if the student um, can't get their IELTS written before they apply, then they're certainly welcome to still apply uh, without the IELTS results, as long as they have an IELTS test date booked. And the same would be true of Duolingo. If they choose to use Duolingo as a um, a means of proving their um, English ability, then certainly as soon as they have a test date booked, then they can, uh, they can start the application process. So normally we provide uh, students 30 days to provide us with the tuition deposit. Um, if the student needs an extension, given the, uh, the circumstances in our world at this point, then we're completely flexible with that at this point. Um, Basically, their only, their only guideline is how long it's going to take for their visa to be processed. So they need to have the uh, tuition deposit paid uh, so that they can get their letter of acceptance in order to submit their application for a study permit. So uh, that's kind of the, the only guideline that they would have in place. Um, if students are applying through the study direct stream, then of course we would be asking for 100% of the, the first year tuition. 
Uh, if they're applying through the regular stream, then we ask for 50% of the first year tuition. Um, in any given program, then the remainder for September start date, the remainder of the tuition is due November 1st. For a January start date, the remainder of the tuition is due by March 1st. Again, tuition deposits can be paid by Flywire. Uh, unless students are in the country already, uh, Flywire doesn't work once students are in Canada, uh, but then they can go to their campus location and uh, pay via numerous methods at the front desk. Okay, we kind of addressed that. So we do rely heavily on uh, our agent partners to assist with the study permit application process. Um, we ask that, um, you know, agents, you know, provide students with the guidance that's required to fill out that application. The application process, of course, looks fairly straightforward, uh, but uh, anyone who's been in this industry for any number of years knows that there are certain things that, uh, that agents can do to provide students with a stronger application. And so uh, that's certainly something that we're seeking from our agent partners. So uh, if students are to, to ask, why would I study um, in Saskatchewan? Why would I study at Great Plains College? Um, there are, in my mind, many, many different reasons why. Uh, some of the main reasons are that uh, while you study in Saskatchewan, I guess in Canada, uh, you can work while you study. So basically, um, students can work 20 hours per week while they are um, in the um, the school year, I guess, and then any time that students are on holidays or classes are not in session, they can work unlimited numbers of hours. So uh, that's one of the benefits of studying um, in at Great Plains College. The um, because we are a designated learning institution, then students are afforded the opportunity to get a postgraduate work permit once they are finished their program. So that postgraduate work permit is uh, period is in direct correlation to the length of their program. So the one year programs get a one year postgraduate work permit. The two year program though um, for students will afford them the opportunity to get a three year postgraduate work permit. So after you finish your two years of study and your three years of postgraduate work permit, you will have had five years of experience in, in Canadian culture and in the Canadian economy. Uh, so that's quite a valuable um, aspect. Now, uh, Saskatchewan, as I said, um, is not necessarily one of Canada's best known destinations, uh, but offers so many amazing opportunities for students. Um, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program is one of the fastest pathways to permanent residence in the country at this point. So basically students require uh, three things in order to be able to apply for permanent residence. Uh, they require a successfully completed uh, program, so certificate, diploma, degree. Um, they need to have 960 hours of work experience in any field. So the work that they do while they study can accumulate towards those 960 hours. Um, normally it takes about one year to accumulate 960 hours of work experience. So students who are in a one-year program um, would hopefully by the end of the 12 month period have accumulated that 960 um, hours. And then the third thing they need is a job offer in their uh, chosen field of study. So for example, I always like to use the continuing care assistant program for this uh, example. Uh, in the continuing care assistant program, um, the students will successfully complete a course in about eight months. Um, in about 12 months, they will have 960 hours uh, accumulated and likely at the end of their eight months, they will have a job offer. So basically, as soon as they finish their 960 hours of work experience, they would be eligible to apply for PR uh, within a year of arriving in Canada. So it is uh, very efficient and um, very 
fast way for students to reach permanent residence uh, in um, Saskatchewan. So I think that pretty much exhausts all of the information that I have for you. Um, I hope that uh, that you were able to uh, to glean some information about Great Plains College and about Saskatchewan and about the opportunities that uh, that we offer for students. I believe that um, you know the the opportunities, as I said, are are endless for students in many different areas of their life, and uh, and we look forward to welcoming the students that you're sending to to Saskatchewan. <laughs> Right, Christy, thank you for such an informative presentation. Uh, yes, you have pretty much cleared all the qu concerns, questions that would uh, attendees would have, but we still have questions rolling in. So should we start answering them? <laughs> sure. Right. So um, there's a question from an attendee. They would want to know if we're going to accept PTE square, score. You know what, currently um, we haven't started accepting PTE. Um, we, we are uh, connected to a partner institution that, um, that really, I guess, sets the parameters for our acceptance. And that institution has, has not adopted PTE just yet. Uh, therefore, we haven't adopted it. Right, right. Uh, this the the another question is which you get all the time. They want to know how many Indian students are studying at GPC. Yeah, right. So um, basically, uh, in the first year of uh, Great Plains College uh, recruiting international students, the majority of our students were Indian, um, and so I think of of sixty five students, I would say that probably 90% of them were Indian. Uh, from that point forward, then it became very important for us to introduce diversity into our international population. So we have worked really hard to uh, try to uh, keep our populations quite diverse. Uh, in the 2019-2020 school year, I would say our Indian population was down to about 50%. Uh, for 2020, 2021, um, that number was looking to be more like 30% of, of our population. So um, we identify quite clearly that it is um, not in anyone's interest to have a large population of any one culture. Um, you know, if, if Indian students are traveling to Canada to study, they don't want to study in a classroom full of Indian students. Uh, they could do that by staying home. So basically, we want to offer them the opportunity to have a global perspective, a global experience, and uh, the opportunity to um, interact with many different cultures. So that's something that's top priority for Great Plains. Right, rightly said. Um, they want to know what is the most popular program at GPC? You know, we've done a good job, I think, of, of keeping all of those three programs um, kind of on par with the number of applications. So uh, for, for various reasons, each of those programs has um, um, or is of interest to students. So basically, uh, students who are maybe trained in another area might use the administrative assistant program as a short-term program um, in order to gain permanent residence. Uh, the continuing care assistant program, I would say, is the one that, that is more of a niche market in terms of the fact that, you know, if you have no desire to work in the health field, regardless of the job opportunities, that's probably one that you shouldn't take <laughs> uh, anyway, because the work is, like I said, working with people you need to, you want to do work. Uh, but the business diploma course, uh, like I said, has also been popular because of the opportunity that it affords for students to get the longer postgraduate work permit. So yeah, each, each of those programs has its own, um, you know, kind of valuable aspects that make them equally attractive to students. Right, right. So um, 
something related to this since uh, you were talking about that the students who are from different background background can offer a uh, uh, administration programs so a, a, a can a graduate apply for these certificates a student who's a graduate a bachelor holder yeah, we have had lots of students who um, have bachelor's degrees in other areas and they went up to, uh, let's say, the business diploma program. Um, you know, like if, if a student, for example, has a degree in pharmacy, uh, then they may use that business diploma program to, um, I guess, enhance their education knowing that in Canada, many pharmacists also run their own business. So uh, basically, it's a nice kind of a combination of education in order to round out a person's opportunities. Right. Um, uh, there's a question, if a BSc students, nursing students can apply for continuing care program, can they be opted? Yeah, actually, yeah. For sure, yeah. The majority of the, the applicants that we have are, are actually nursing students who are uh, using the continuing care assistant program to enter the health field in Canada. This is very common. Right, right. Um, uh, there's a question uh, from an attendee. They would want to know if there are going to be any arrangements, <laughs> although we have already discussed about it, but uh, we're getting a lot of questions on the quarantine thing that if students will be giving any uh, kind of advantage or any help uh, uh, from the institute uh, once they reach for September. So, yeah, we're just in the process of making those arrangements as it stands right now. Uh, we are uh, attempting to partner with a, a university in Regina who has a... Um, uh, I guess what's like a residence facility for their students and they're offering us the opportunity to have our students quarantine in their facility um, at a reduced rate for the students. So uh, we're really working hard to try to make sure that, um, you know, our students can quarantine for the, the minimum cost to them um, in you know, once they arrive here, we understand that that will be an additional cost for them. And um, so we're doing our best to try to ensure that the students are not hindered by uh, any high costs in that area. But much information yet to come in that department. Right, right. Since we are talking about costs, they would want to know that what is an approximate cost for a program at GPC? Uh, well, it, it very much depends on the program, um, but the uh, approximate cost uh, for administrative assistant is around twelve thousand eight hundred. Uh, the business program has an approximate cost for two years of around uh, thirty thousand, and the continuing care assistant is around eighteen thousand. So, um, in terms of cost of living. Um, then, as I mentioned, Saskatchewan has a very reasonable cost of living in comparison to other um, places. And so in Swift Current, for example, a student could rent a one bedroom apartment um, and pay all of their utilities and their internet for somewhere in that uh, $1,100 per month. Right. Which is affordable. <laughs> Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, so there's a question since we were talking about graduate students uh, opting for our programs. Uh, uh, they're asking how much gap uh, can we accept uh, for those students? Right. Um, you know, that, that question is um, one that we actually have no problem with accepting any number of years of gap. Uh, so in terms of, um, of the regional college system, many of our students will have a gap in study. Uh, it's just very common. Um, the question I think more needs to be posed to citizenship and immigration. Um, the gap in study um, is more impacted by the study permit application process than it would be by our application process. 
so I, I see in the in the comments that they're asking about a gap of eight years and for us yeah. that's not a problem whatsoever we have no trouble accepting students who have a gap of eight years or more but um, it's certainly something that needs to be cleared with citizenship and immigration. Um, I think a very well written study plan for students in the application process can help with that. Uh, you know, if you can demonstrate why someone would be returning to school after that gap, I think that's, um, that's very beneficial as well. Uh, so yeah, basically for us, no problems whatsoever with any number of gap, years of gap, but uh, for immigration, certainly that's something you should find out. And does it imply to the backlogs as well, the, the reappears that they take? So um, we have um, kind of set a, a, a limit, I think, um, you know, eight backlogs at something like that is something that uh, we wouldn't want to see anything more than that. Um, but yeah, that's certainly something that we work with MSM very closely on. Right. To an eight, that is, right? Yeah. Right. And um, um, are there any programs available for uh, the next intake? the students who are unable to get through uh, or for September, are mm -hmm. we, do we have uh, intake for January? So normally the only program that we have that has January intake is the administrative assistant program. Uh, but given the, um, the crazy circumstances of our world, then uh, Great Plains College has opened up an intake for business, in, the business diploma in January. So um, as of um, January 2021, there will be um, one intake of business diploma um, for January. Right. Believe that there will not be a January intake. The intake would be then next September. Right. Um, yes. So we have um, almost answered all the questions and we are running out of time. So um, so is there anything that you would like to tell the attendees before we... Yeah, certainly I appreciate uh, each and every one of you taking the time to join us this afternoon or this evening. <laughs> um, I, uh, I appreciate uh, the work that all of you have been doing to try and maneuver this difficult time in international education. It's been uh, certainly one where each of us is learning something new on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, I, I really value the partnership that, um, that, you know, the partnerships we have with our agent partners in order to to try and maneuver this so that the students are, are not impacted um, any more than they have already been. So um, certainly open to, uh, to that conversation. Um, also just wanted to add that, um, you know, like I said, we are, we are doing our best to ensure that we can provide programming that is, um, you know, really based on student need and what's best for students. So, um, you know, Please, if you have questions in regards to any particular uh, circumstance, let us know and, uh, and we will do our best to make sure that the needs of the students are met. It's, uh, it's probably been the most heartbreaking part of this is seeing the impact that it's had on, on um, you know, our younger generation and, and their life plans. So we want to make sure that we can um, try to mitigate some of those things as, as best we can. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And uh, uh, thanks to MSM for putting this on. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Christy. And we're looking forward for another webinar soon with you, discussing mm -hmm. more options for students. And I would like to thank uh, the attendees as well for uh, being here. And we are excited. And uh, uh, we are hopeful that we are going to see you for our next uh, webinars as well. In the meanwhile, if you want a copy of uh, the recording, you can get onto our uh, uh, Facebook page or YouTube page and follow us there and you'll be able to get our copies of your uh, the event. And thank you everyone. Uh, we hope to see you again next time soon. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Bye. Have a good bye day. Bye-bye. Take care.